Welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. Today we'll be taking a look at the Dofer A106 12 decibel SEM type filter. This filter is based on the legendary circuit found in the Oberheim SEM module. Some of you may have heard of it out there. Um, as we're kind of moving forward, just to give you a little preview, uh, some of the things that are going to distinguish this uh, module from some of the other filters that we've heard in the past are kind of its pleasing way that it can distort or overdrive audio, uh, depending on how you've, you've heard the word ex explained. Um, has different filter types, uh, as well as a cool kind of resonance control that even at the maximum uh, will not take you into self-oscillation. Very similar to its brother, or not brother, but uh, brother in manual anyway, uh, the WAS filter. So the WAS filter is also one of those filters that at full resonance does not self-oscillate. So this one actually does not self-oscillate either. Uh, and an interesting tidbit, if you visited the website before, uh, you'll know that the A124 manual is actually the manual intended for this module since most of the pots are uh, sort of similar uh, with the exception, of course, with the polarized input uh, found right here, uh, which is one of the other things I was going to mention was the CV input here is actually intended for uh, polarizing your incoming CV, which is different than some other modules. So that was the third thing I was going to mention that uh, actually distinguishes this module as well. So with that being said, just kind of a little preview, let's get into the front panel. So dead center, we have our audio input at about 50%. You're going to begin to hear some of that nice uh, distortion sound uh, to your audio. You can overdrive it as much or as little as you want. Uh, up top, we have our frequency cutoff control that goes from zero to 10 right there. And this will control it in uh, whichever one of the modes that you're using your filter in, because you can use it as a band pass, low pass, high pass, or a notch. Uh, and we'll talk about those controls here in a moment. Uh, as we move immediately, let's see to the left right there, we have a CV input. You can pipe in an LFO, an envelope, uh, any other types of CVs that you might have in your modular system. Uh, going down to the next input right there is another CV input that we can see right there. And then as we were mentioning a little bit before, uh, we have a polarizer found on this one. So if you move it all the way in the clockwise direction, you get a positive version of your incoming CV. And if you move it in the counterclockwise position, you get an inverted version of your incoming CV. And then, of course, if you use both, then you get the sum of those two, which is a standard Dofer convention on CV inputs. Going immediately down, we've already talked about the audio input. Uh, only other thing I wanted to mention was around 50% um, is where you hear that distortion. But if you move it up, then, of course, you get more. So. That's pretty straightforward, though. Uh, next one down, bandpass out. Bandpass out is going to feed the bandpass version of this filter out to whatever mixer or other module that you want to use it to. Um, immediately to the right of that, you have your resonance control, as we were saying a little bit earlier. If you move it all the way to the max, it will now self-oscillate. Uh, if you move it all the way this way, uh, you'll have no resonance. Uh, and if I'm going by what it says on the website, I didn't see it specifically uh, listed, but I may have missed it. If it uh, is similar to its behavior, uh, the resonance control on the A124, when you're using a band pass, will actually control the width of the band that you're using in your band pass filter. So we'll kind of observe that down the road and see if it actually behaves the same way. Uh, going down to the next output, we have our low pass, high pass out. Uh, this is going to actually output whether you're in low pass or high pass, depending on the control immediately to the right. So right now I have it in the fully clockwise position. So what would be coming out would be a high pass filter. And if I move it all the way to the center, uh, you might see the word notch right there. Uh, that's actually going to output a notch filter, very similar to a phasing type effect. And if you move it to the counterclockwise position, then you get your standard low pass filter. So that about does it for the basics. Now let's go ahead and listen to a couple of sounds that uh, we can kind of put together. So if you go down to the bottom section with me, here is our sequencer setup. 
Uh, you, if you've watched Rails World, Rails World of Since before, you may have seen this setup. So I'm going to be taking a few notes out of here, feeding them over to my quantizer, just like that, and then taking the notes from my quantizer, and then going up into that top section right next to our friend A106-5 over to our A110, patching in. And then I'm going to take the saw wave from our A110 and then patch that into our audio in of our filter. And then I just have to get my output going to my mixer. So let's start with the low pass, high pass out. And we should start in low pass mode since that's where my setting is right there. So patching in. And yep, standard low pass sound. So let's move this up. There's our nice little cutoff right there. Let's overdrive the input a little bit. Okay, like right there, and then let's bring it down a little. Okay, now let's increase resonance some. Okay, let me bring my level down a little. Switch over to notch filter mode right there. Now let's adjust the cutoff. And you can hear that kind of phasing type effect right there. And bring up the level just a little bit. Okay, now let's move over to high pass mode. And just note that we're at full resonance right now. We'll just do a few passes with that. Okay, let's bring the resonance down a little bit. Same thing. Cut off all the way up, all the way down. And let's do a little bit of overdrive. Okay, and of course you can use the settings anywhere in between if you want to. So if you want that, you can do that. And if you want this, you can do this. But we'll see more of that in one of the upcoming video segments. Um, let's hear the band pass just a little bit. So I'm going to patch in there. And now let's increase and decrease, de decrease the frequency cutoff. So there we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it about there. Turn up my input just a little. Now let's adjust the resonance control. So there it is at maximum. And there it is at minimum. And there at minimum. And there at maximum. And what we should be listening for here is to see if it's behaving as the WAS filter uh, in respect of the band from our bandpass actually getting a little more narrow, which I do kind of hear that. Like that's a little more narrow, kind of focused than this is kind of a little more wider band of audio that's coming through. And since we have just a little bit of time, let me see if I can set this up quickly. Uh, I'm gonna take my clock out from here and then feed it to my envelope generator up here at the top. And there we have a nice little envelope being triggered right there. Uh, let's see right there. Take the output. And let's just hear a little bit of that polarized input. So I'm gonna bring it all the way in the positive direction. 
So that's all the way positive version of our CV incoming. Now let's flip it over to negative. So a little bit different than what we've heard before, but different in a good way. I kind of like it. And of course, anywhere in between. Okay, so that's actually going to take care of just the little basic demo that I had uh, planned for this particular video. Um, I do plan on doing a few more, uh, let's see, detailed uh, demonstrations with the A106-5. Uh, we'll get a really good look and listen uh, to our filter in the different modes. Uh, we'll probably be looking at it at, uh, with the oscilloscope as uh, we have with some other types of audio sources in RAL's World of Sense. So we'll be observing that for a couple of videos. And uh, then after that, I thought we'd do maybe some modulation. Uh, I still haven't completed like a full outline for the series. So if you do have some suggestions that you'd like to share with me, uh, I'm totally open to that. Um, I did get some fairly good responses uh, in the last uh, video series that I did, the A137-2 wave multiplier series. Uh, I got some very good suggestions for upcoming videos. Um, so I do have those kind of in my little pocket. Um, just to give you guys an idea of what's been suggested, uh, and you can kind of chime in if you, you know, want to see that or don't see that. Uh, one person suggested the A143-1. Uh, somebody else suggested the A111. Uh, we also had a few suggestions for kind of a combi combination type video series on different types of switches, uh, how you can kind of, you know, utilize them in your modular setup in other ways. Uh, so that's also kind of rolling around in my mind. Uh, but lots and lots of different types of suggestions. Those are kind of the three that just came to my mind right now. Uh, if any of you have some suggestions on modules that you would like to see, uh, please feel free to either post it to this video or shoot me an email via YouTube or some other route that you can find me out there on the virtual webs. Um, but as far as the basics video goes, we are done with that one. Uh, please join us in the next segment, which is going to be a little bit more detail oriented. And we'll kind of be delving into the world of oscilloscopes and getting a look at how the filter operates uh, with different types of audio going into it. Um, and then after that, as I said, we'll be doing modulation with this as well. Uh, if you have any ideas for something that you might want to see in the upcoming demo series, please feel free to share that with me as well. Um, but for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you'll join us next time and uh, keep on patching out there.